In response to the Russian military invasion, the Humanitarian Medical Aid Organization Direct Relief is working with local public health agencies, healthcare providers, and medical supply companies to find out what aid the people of Ukraine need and how to get it to them. Thomas Tai, president and CEO of Direct Relief, joins us this morning to talk a little bit more about this effort. Good morning, Thomas. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people appreciate the work you are doing. Tell us a little bit more about the supplies and medications that are most at need right now. Well, I, you know, it's shifted significantly over the past week. There, two weeks ago, directly we've had a delivery to Ukraine for some very specialized cancer therapies and cardiovascular medications that um, in the last six months we've been providing support to Ukraine primarily for COVID, in addition to these sort of niche products that they needed and we could help them get. Now, since the war broke out, it shifted completely um, as they've tried to deal with the kind of total disruption of their country and health system, uh, maintaining services for everything that existed already, and then now dealing with increasing number of war injuries that has been the, the increasing concern, um, reaching, you know, obviously just the daily communications um, as certain hospitals have been bombed and closed and just trying to figure out where to take patients where they'll be safe and can be treated. So I think the nature of what's been requested has shifted from kind of the basics to the trauma related acute injury types of materials. And we have had a, an initial request that we've been able to fulfill this week to get some medic packs uh, that we pre-kit here in the States and to respond to emergencies of all types they saw that and that's really what they wanted. So we were able to fly 20 pallets or 360 out um, early this week that have through Poland that have been now taken by the Ministry of Health for, for use inside the country. Right. And, and that was my question. You addressed it a little bit. Tell us a little bit more about the work that Direct Relief does. You know, you mentioned you've been helping with more of the basics and, and now it's going through Poland, you say? Yeah, I think just, you know, the, we don't have any ability to fly anything into to Kyiv. I mean, two weeks ago we, we did and we uh, and it was fine. But I think just the fundamental change in circumstances for just basic logistics, and we have an active war going on in Europe right now, millions of people fleeing outside of the, from Ukraine as well as within Ukraine. So I think just the, the moving target of where people are, um, it, it's a compounding effect, you know, as any mass evacuation is, there's a lot of chronic illness in the world that people manage routinely, whether it's asthma or diabetes or hypertension. And we see this a lot, even evacuations in Texas, uh, if there's a hurricane or something, you know, if you have to flee rapidly, you can find yourself in crisis a couple of days later if you don't have something that you need to maintain your health. So there's all that, plus the war injuries and you know fluid movement of people and kind of bombed out roads that are limiting the access uh, and just roadways to, to different places. So I think that's kind of the mix, but you know, so far we've made, been able to have continued good communications directly with the Ministry of Health and they're tracking things much more closely than we can. And you have to make you know, on the fly adjustments, but there's plenty of resources in Europe, including with direct relief that we have um, several hundred million dollars of medical inventories, but it's just making sure they're right. And then you can get them to the people who need them uh, when they need them, and that's the challenge at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Just incredible work right now that y'all are doing on the ground. The biggest question I think folks here at home is how can we help? Real quick, how, what are some ways that we can help support your work, help support the folks in Ukraine? I mean, directrelief.org, you can figure out what we're doing. We'll keep that information active, but we're sensitive at Direct Relief that there's a lot of things we do not do. We don't do food, water, shelter. We're really focused on health and medical. So mm -hmm. my advice would be if people want to see, you know, which groups they uh, are active and they could support, look at charitynavigator.org because it's an independent rating agency and they can advise consumers basically who's doing what and they assign a score for things like governance and transparency. And that's important, I think, because of the emotional thing, it's, it's a great right. quality, but it can also be exploited. So like any you know, advice would be do your homework, find a group that's going to do a good job uh, before you part with your money. Yeah, absolutely. Some great advice there. Well, we appreciate your time this morning, Thomas T. with uh, Direct Relief. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.